this video we're gonna listen to a, a Vox AC15 hand wired and uh, I'm going to change uh, coupling capacitors on the top boost channel. Uh, the theory behind this is that um, if you change the value of the capacitor you also change the uh, frequency of the high pass filter. So depending on what resistor you're using and what capacitor you're using you're gonna get different results. There's going to be a cut in the low end, which means that if you have a lower value capacitor, you get more of a cutoff. And if you have a larger value capacitor, uh, you get a fuller tone with more low end. If you have a Tweed Deluxe Fender, you have a big capacitor, uh, which means there's a lot of bottom end, which sounds nice when you have a clean and full sound. but as you get into overdrive territory you tend to get a more flubby bottom end because you have so much bass that's getting distorted in your tone that maybe it's not that uh, suitable for high gain sounds. Uh, if you compare it to a Marshall style amp where you have a you have a much smaller capacitor which means that uh, you get more bottom end cutoff and uh, you are left with more mid-range and high frequencies which sounds better or more smooth when you distort it. So if it sounds interesting stay tuned. Here we have today's patient. Uh, Vox AC15 hand wired. We have the inside of the amp. So it's a turret board and uh, you can see all the components. Uh, most of them very neatly wired. The ones that aren't are the ones I have changed, of course. So if we look at them like this, you can see some of them uh, not being totally straight uh, mounted. That's my doing. Uh, the components I've changed in this uh, or replaced are uh, some of the filter capacitors and most of the other capacitors. Uh, the reason I did was uh, I spent too many hours on YouTube and I heard and read about people who had these amps and some of them sounded much better I think than my did so uh, I tried a few things out. One thing that happened the last time I was changing components or replacing or improving was that uh, I ran out of uh, a coupling compa capacitor for the top boost channel. Uh, this one should be 500 picofarad and the only one I had lying around was a 100 picofarad. Uh, which means it's much, it's much too small. Uh, I ordered a few and they arrived today. What does this look like to you? Correct. A whole lot of fun. Let's see, so here we have the top boost input. Goes to the grid of the V1B, and the uh, signal comes out here, and we can follow it down. No, sorry, down here, and this is where the coupling capacitor sits, and it it's actually 470 picofarad here. I had a 500 picofarad. I don't, I don't know how, how big a difference that is, but um, here we have it. This is the one. Thank you. 
And now the 500 picofarad capacitor.
is a perfect perfect fix, I think, if you have a kind of thin sounding guitar. Uh, in this case, I'm using a Stratocaster. Not a Fender, but a Tokai Strat that I've been using on all these clips. Uh, and uh, when I have this uh, largest capacitor and I'm playing in the bridge position, I get a really full and full and thick sound. Perfect if you use more cleaner sounds on this kind of amp and you think that it's a bit thin sounding, you can experiment with this. So. And I think uh, this pretty much sums it up for this video. Um, there's a good reason that uh, the original capacitor is a 500 picofarad. It gives you a good mix of uh, high end that cuts through a mix and still it's not overly thin. Uh, and it's very characteristic, I think it's a big part of the Vox AC15 or AC30 sound. That first decoupling capacitor on the top boost channel. I hope you have enjoyed this video and uh, please subscribe to my channel if you like this. Bye!